everybody, this is Chris. Thank you for joining me. In today's video, I would like to show you a super great tip that I have found here on YouTube, but I wanted to share this with you. So, I don't know if you're like me, but I'm really having a big, some big issues having a nice blend when I want to blend my ink uh, together, whether it's Distress or any other brand. There is always a mark, there is always something not going right, it doesn't blend, it's not smooth, you can see the, the traces of your um, ink pads or um, you know blender tools like these. I've never been happy. So you can use this on any kind of paper. I'm using just regular cardstock, no brands. I've used on different kinds of paper and they just work, uh, this technique works perfectly. So I've used these um, uh, foam stamps and they are cut and dry. Usually you can buy these uh, when you you want to change your blending tools. Uh, they don't stick actually on it, you need to put a little piece of, um, of Velcro on the back here, glue it down, make sure it's uh, really well glued, and then you will be able to use it on your uh, blending tools, otherwise you can buy the refills, but they're quite expensive. So it works perfectly with these, and it's also it works also perfectly with these. These are just sponges that I have found in my local improvement store. You can find these also in craft stores. I think that Stampin' Nut makes some, and it's absolutely great for this technique. Better than the makeup sponges, I think, because it glides much easier. So you can cut these into little pieces, and it's really not expensive. Usually you can find them by two, and I think I'm gonna buy even more, because I you can handle these much better than this. It's, it's not bad, but here you have something to grab on, and because of the shape it makes, it's even nicer to apply, but also really both of them will work. So I'm having here a scratch piece of paper, and you'll see that it's gonna work just fine, but the main ingredient here is glycerin. Any brand will new, it's, uh, it has to be 100% glycerin, nothing added to it, and it's a natural product. It's uh, even good for your skin. It comes in a lot of uh, makeup products, you know, healthy makeup products. So you're gonna need this one. It's really not expensive. And that's the main ingredients. So here I'm working on a stamping tool. Just work on a acrylic block if you want to. I just wanted to have everything here under my hands so you could be able to see what I'm doing. And I'm putting a few drops here in, on my uh, acrylic block. And now I'm going to use this one that I have already done and I just want to show you this blend. Okay, I think it's, I would never have this kind of result in seconds, I mean really in seconds. This is another example here uh, using different, a uh, blue, um, I'm sorry, green and brown. I wanted to have my very own color and it's so quick to do. And if you, if you have it in your hands, just spread it around, it's really nice for your skin. And it's water soluble, so it's a very easy cleanup as well. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do pink again and I'm going to mix different colors of pinks and maybe oranges. I usually start with a light, the lightest color, so I'm putting some ink here and it works with all kinds of inks, I mean dye based inks. I'm going to use this and I'm going to put a little bit of, um, of glycerin here on my sponge. Not too much, make sure you have it everywhere. When your sponge is brand new, you need to put a little bit more because your sponge is going to absorb the product. So you just take a little bit and on the side here, make sure that it goes everywhere. And then you're gonna take, but don't fill it too much. Make some tests before. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of this color and I'm gonna directly apply it onto my paper. I think I don't have enough. And there you go. And you just start blending, putting a little bit more glycerin if you think you need some. A little bit of this ink, and I'm starting to blend. And you can see my paper is drinking that ink and that glycerin very quickly, but the blending also is very smooth. I'm gonna put some more. And I put quite a lot here. I could have done something a little lighter and put less. But I'm amazed on how quickly I really can do this. Be careful with your fingers. I'd like to use a little paper there. So you need to use some cardstock for this, you know, um, some kind of heavy paper, because it's going to sink in. I wouldn't 
recommend doing this on your card base because it might buckle up and because it's oily uh, you might have um, it might seep through a little bit but if you use this on a layer card and you know you, you glue this down when it's dry onto your card base it's just gonna be beautiful look at this no harsh lines you can come back if you need some more and you can of course add as much as you wish oops this is not what I'm supposed to do I think I'm pressing too hard actually and I'm gonna use maybe a little bit of this orange what is it it's wild honey maybe it's a bit too dark let's give it a try and I'm gonna still use the same one here I'm adding a little bit more Yeah, I was, I was pressing way too much. Look at this blend. Let me come a little closer, maybe. I'm gonna put this up. Look at this blend. I need some more ink. Yep. And this blend is absolutely beautiful. This is where I ripped my paper a little bit, but look at that. I'm gonna come back with some darker pink. And if you want, you can um, clean your stamp here. You don't have to. Look at that, I just love it. I'm gonna be doing more blendings now that I know this technique because it is really, really easy to do. And I'm gonna go back with some, let's try some yellow, let's see. I think, yeah, that's better. I'm gonna go on, on top of all this to lighten it up, to make even a nicer blend. Look at this. I mean, now you won't have any excuses that you didn't make it. If you're using just a little bit of, well, a little bit, you use quite some uh, glycerin here just in the beginning because you really need to put some glycerin and it needs to sink up a little bit. But honestly, you can build it up very quickly. And I'm trying to, and the more you put actually afterwards, you don't need to put that much glycerin, especially in the beginning. And look at that. And I'm a little bit sloppy. I didn't take my time there, but you can make something even nicer. We put a little bit more of this squeezed lemonade. I like to put yellow on top because I think it brightens the whole thing. But hey, look at that. I would have never had this kind of result with my other papers. And I'm going to show you the same thing. See on the back side? Well, it's because I have some, this is just glue, it's not the glycerin. But look at that. It, it did sink a little bit into my paper. This is why I would not recommend doing this on a card base. I'm going to need more glycerin. And it dries fairly quickly. You can always use a... Uh, paper towel on top of it to take away the excess. And when your sponge is brand new, again, you will need to put more glycerin because it's gonna be absorbed. But after a while, it's gonna stay there. Let me start from here. Look at that. I, I really prefer this sponge, actually. I do prefer, I think I even have less sharp edges here because probably of the shape. But how smooth is it? See that? Better than this. I have it, I'm gonna use it up but I usually make more harsh lines. I just want to show you how easy it is. I'm 
gonna put my yellow here because I don't want to contaminate my ink pad. It is a little bit already, but that's gonna be fine. A little bit of glycerin, color, and there you go. I need way more. I should have used maybe the orange color. I think my ink pad is a little dry. Look at this, how smooth this is. I just love it. Yeah, my orange is better. And I think I'm gonna have to add up some more glycerin maybe. Oops, sorry about that. So yeah, I am crazy about this technique. I think it's really worth it. Um, and it's really not expensive. You go fast. And I put more glycerin here, it seep through just a tiny bit. But I mean, the colors are vibrant. You can blend it even better. It's funny on the camera, you see the, the blending in real life is much better. But again, I didn't take my time here. Just to show you how quick it can be done, I want to add a little bit more of this orange. I like it. It's really vibrant. It's hard to think that we're in autumn and fall because it's so hot outside. It's really hot. And there you go, I left this space a little blank, but it's really smooth, it's easy to do. Always start by your lightest color and you're gonna have a great, great job. I mean, it's really beautiful. I think I wanna add a little bit more pink, actually. Let me see, and I'm gonna be, I'm gonna call it done in a minute. It's just that I'm so happy that I have found this technique that is so wonderful. So maybe your paper is going to buckle just a little bit, but that's, honestly, that's fine because it's going to dry fairly quickly. I think I'm going to go and start from here. I didn't put too much. Just a little bit. And you can build up your background as much as you wish. I absolutely love it. No harsh lines. So there you go. It's like you have three colors here now and I think the blend is absolutely great. Be careful again with your fingers. If you have some marks, just go over it with your lightest color and it's gonna take them away. But you will have maybe figure prints. That's what I'm using, some baking uh, paper. You can use just a scrap piece of paper as well underneath your fingers. There you go. I hope that you will give it a try because it's a wonderful trick and it's gonna save a lot of time to a lot of people and a lot of headaches when it didn't work until now. So tell me, if you use this technique, really give it a try. Tell me, do you prefer this kind of sponge or do you like this kind of foamy sponge? It's completely different, the texture is different, but I really, the fact, I like this one best because there are less harsh lines than here. Maybe if I would have cut this into a circle, it would have been better. But still, I like this shape. And also, I think it's cleaner for your fingers somehow. But yeah, give it a try. Tell me which of the two sponges you prefer. Or if you have other tricks, if you have just a random piece of paper, you don't have the choice of buying something different, how do you blend perfectly your colors? I think I am going to adapt this technique for good. So please give me some thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell button. And also leave me your comments if you have any questions or just to answer my questions or to come and say hello. I'm really happy and it's also helping my channel when people interact with me like this. I'm being completely uh, transparent with you and also share on social medias. Thank you very much. Take care and happy crafting. Bye-bye.